Okay, we're here with uh, Martin McPhail at the uh, fifth uh, undergraduate research conference at S&T. So, uh, Martin, uh, so tell us what you're doing. Uh, you're oh, this is uh, some of the work we've been doing in the surface chemistry lab. I've been uh -huh. working under Dr. Tusley. Um, we've been studying single wall nanotubes, which are shown here, these sorts of structures. One of the interesting applications of these structures has been as catalysts for fuel cells and uh, other materials, which can be, you can form catalysts of these materials by depositing metal nanoparticles on it, such as we have here. Here we have a carbon surface that platinum nanoparticles have been deposited on, and when we put this in a uh, water solution here, we uh, are able to detect a current across this. Now this is very important for the generation of clean, renewable energy without going through any sort of thermal cycle that creates pollution. Uh, if we want to create efficient fuel cells, however, we need to increase our ability to uh, deposit these nanoparticles onto the surface more homogeneously and of a specific size regime. So, since this deposition is all controlled by the columbic potential, we want to see if we can change the columbic potential of these surfaces. This is done by functionalizing these surfaces with various groups of different electron donating characters so we can change the electron density of the surfaces. For our study, we tried functionalizing them with carboxylic acid, maleic anhydride, and nitrosyl groups. We confirmed this using a variety of methods such as XPS, ATR, IR, and TGA. We then want to measure the point zero charge, which is characteristic of the columbic potential of the surface and its ability to absorb ions from solution. Um, we wanted to see if there's any correlation between this and the electron donating character of the, of the functional groups that were attached. And finally, we wanted to see that since single wall nanotubes can come in a variety of electronic types, they can be very specific conducting or metallic. We want to see if there will be any change in the uh, semiconducting versus metallic character of these nanotubes when we change the electron density by these, by any functional groups. So we did three sets of reactions. We oxidized single wall nanotubes in concentrated acid solution to form carboxylic acid moieties on them. We performed a diels alder reaction on another sample of nanotubes to form maleic and hydride groups onto the surface. And finally, we actually formed single wall nanotube, sh nanotube sheets and attached these into an electrochemical cell as the working electrode in a potassium nitride solution. And when a positive voltage was applied to this, we were able to get functionalization with nitrosyl groups onto the surface. Okay. Now, after we had performed all these functionalization experiments, we also uh, performed measurements of the point of zero charge of these samples. This is actually a pretty simple measurement to make because you can make up solutions of various pH, measure their pH, add a single wall nanotube sample to, this, to the solution, wait for several hours, and then make a final pH measurement. And if you plot these, then what you'll see is that you actually develop a plateau in the region, and this plateau is representative of an equilibrium that the ions try to reach with the nanotube surface and this plateau region indicates the point of zero charge of the sample. So first of all, we wanted to make sure that we had the correct, uh, the correct functional groups attached to the surface. We did this first of all by X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Here we see uh, the carbon 1s, oxygen 1s, and nitrogen 1s orbitals. Um, each of these peaks correlates to a different oxidation state of uh, the atoms, and these binding energies of these peaks correlate well with the literature values for these, the oxidation states of these functional groups and their related binding energies. Um, and down here we also ran an XPS of the uh, solution supernatant that we had used after we had reacted in, uh, the electrochemical cell reaction. We wanted to see specifically the nitrate peak right here, which helps confirm the proposed mechanism for this reaction. Uh, we also confirmed these functional groups using attenuated total reflection infrared spectrum. Uh, these show uh, stretches of the molecular groups caused by the infrared excitation. 
these all co these peaks all correlate well with stretches uh, commonly observed for the functional groups of interest, which again shows that we do have the right functional groups on these surfaces. Uh, thermogravimetric analysis was run to make sure that we have covalent functionization as opposed to fizzy absorption, which we need covalent functionization to make a good determination of the, make sure that, uh, so we can make a direct correlation between the electron withdrawing character and the buoyancy of charge. What we see here is that at relatively high, high temperature we have significant mass losses among the nanotubes, which indicates functional groups being lost at those temperatures. So it means that it requires high energy and therefore to remove these groups, therefore they must be covalently bound to the surface as opposed to fizzy zones. In the point of zero charge data, we see that we are able to get a wide range of point of zero charge values for the functionalized nanotubes. This is in stark contrast to other carbon surfaces such as graphite or carbon black where you get virtually no change in point zero charge among many of the functional attempts that have made to these surfaces, which makes these uh, an interesting material for catalytic purposes. To track the semiconducting character of these samples, we also ran ultraviolet visible near IR spectra, which show an interesting feature here called the E11 semiconducting region. This is called so because the absorbance in this region is proportional to the amount of semiconducting character in the nanotube sample. And here we do see a large difference that uh, has occurred among the uh, functionalized groups. So it does seem that there is changes in semiconductor character caused by functionalization. We also see in the Raman spectra that there, that this also gives us another way to track the semiconducting character by taking the integrated peak area of the D-band here and taking the ratio of the integrated peak area of the G-band here. That gives us a way of measuring the metallic character of the nanotubes. And what we see, and the results that we see here, is that, first of all, there were changes in the point of zero charge, that these tracked well with the electron withdrawing character as measured by the Hammett sigma constant, and that actually we were able to find that increasing electron withdrawing character also caused increase in the point of zero charge. Likewise, we were able to correlate this with the semiconducting character, and that we were able to produce samples of increasing semiconducting character by functionalizing them with groups of increased electron withdrawing character. Finally, fi in, su in summary, this gives us a method of tuning point of zero charges by functionalization and also tuning semiconducting character by functionalization. This is good for creating better, creating better catalytic surfaces by being able to better control the platinum nanoparticle deposition or any metal nanoparticle deposition, and which creates better opportunities for more efficient fuel cells, better sensors, and creating greener energy for the future. Great, great. Listen, have you published any of this? Or? Uh, yeah, we currently have a Journal of Physical Chemistry article that is uh, currently uh, under review here. Uh, in which all this, uh, in which all of this uh, information is detailed and outlined. Okay. So this should hopefully be published very soon. Okay, great. We're looking forward to reading it when it comes out in print. Great. Hey, thanks, Martin. All right. Thank you.